Hello, dear friends, my name is Dr. Igor, I am a clinical oncologist, practicing since 2010. And uh, today we will go into talk about the rose, or wild rose, or rose hip. Uh, this is the favorite um, plant that you can brew and make a drink or make jams uh, that is uh, often consumed in many countries and it can be used in the folk medicine of many countries. So today we are going to talk about varieties and composition of wild rose, about application in ancient times, about uh, application in folk medicine and modern medicine. Uh, I will tell you a little bit about scientific studies on cells, on animals and even on humans uh, using the rose hip, for example on obesity, blood pressure, cholesterol and uh, on wrinkles or menstrual cramps in women. Then I will tell you how to dry it and how to brew it. And few words, words about the side effects and contraindications. So, let's start. Look, there are a lot of different types of rose. And um, rose is the common name of all these plants. And this is a uh, rosacea family. They can have different uh, colors of their flowers, different shapes, different uh, leaves, etc. And we know that rose or rose hip is very famous for this, for its very high contacts of vitamin C. Actually, it's the one of the richest plants in the world in vitamin C. Although uh, different uh, types, uh, they can vary in its contents. And in general, if the rose hip has red or white flowers, they are the highest in vitamin C. But if the flowers are pink or especially yellow, they are the lowest. And the higher the plant grows in the mountains, the more vitamin C is usually found there. Most common are rosa canina, rose hip, rosa rugosa, fechenko. Some say that uh, there are more than 100 types. The others say like 400 types. It's not really important for us today. Rose hip was used uh, for centuries in uh, medicine of different countries. For example, Avicenna, the famous Arabic doctor, he was using it uh, to treat the diseases of eyes and gums and teeth. And European doctors of uh, medieval times, they used uh, rose hip to treat the gastrointestinal and female diseases. Also, it was used as their wound healing remedy and for treatment, for example, of tuberculosis. Now we know that it has not only vitamin C, but a lot of different things. It has fiber, fatty acids, carbohydrates, minerals, uh, vitamin B2, A, B6, uh, B1, E, uh, different uh, substances like uh, routine or quercetin or uh, anthocyanins, uh, a lot of different things. And because of that contents, it may um, affect our body in different ways. We know from preclinical studies on cells or on animals that it can have some antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-obesity, anti-tumor uh, properties, can protect liver, kidneys, neural system, heart, blood vessels, can kill Helicobacter pylori and treat uh, gastritis, for example, and can have some pain-killing effect. For example, there is a meta-analysis of uh, few randomized controlled trials uh, where rose hip powder was used for treatment of osteoarthritis, and it showed that it could help to decrease the pain of such patients. Actually, rose hip is used in uh, traditional medicine, and there are it's uh, the basis of many uh, different uh, drugs in different countries. Not sure if uh, there are any registered drugs with rose hip in your country, but mostly, for example, in Russia, you can see it can have the choleritic properties. For example, it increases the bile flow, it uh, improves the bile flow. And it can be used for cholecystitis without stones, for example, for uh, liver inflammation, for hepatitis. But uh, they say that it can give some allergic reactions, or if uh, the person has the bile, uh, the gold stones, 
uh, it's uh, quite dangerous. Uh, in general, it's quite dangerous to use the coloretic medications in uh, the case of gold stones because they can be displaced and uh, it, they can cause the inflammation of gallbladder or they can go into the bile ducts and, and clog them. So it's better to be very cautious with coloretics if you have the gold stones. Also, uh, it says that uh, better not to use it in pregnancy or in kids uh, younger than 12 because it was not studied in those group of groups of people, not because it's very dangerous. There is also oil preparation that was the uh, water extract. This is oil preparation for topical use because uh, rose hip has very high contacts, uh, contents of vitamin A and vitamin E that are antioxidants and anti-inflammatory. And uh, if you have any inflammation of skin like dermatitis, eczema, psoriasis, for example, or trophic ulcers that cannot be healed for a long time, if you have atrophy of mucous membranes, if you have a radiation skin lesions like in oncology patients who get radiation therapy, for example, and mothers who breastfeed, who have some damage to their nipples, they may use this remedy. Next, in folk medicine, uh, they can use it as choleretic to Im improve the bile outflow to treat liver diseases. We already uh, talked about it as diaphoretic and uh, to treat respiratory infections, especially if you use it with honey, if you have cough, if you have inflammation in your airways. Also, it can be used to struggle with anxiety, for example, as a diuretic. Uh, to increase the urine flow and to prevent kidney stones. It can kill Helicobacter pylori, we already talked about it. Also for liver, kidney diseases, for bladder disease, atherosclerosis, tuberculosis, hypertension, diabetes, constipation, protection of neural system, heart and blood vessels. This is folk medicine use. By the way, there were some studies on uh, cancer cell lines, not on humans with cancer, but on cell lines. Uh, the one was on triple negative breast cancer, very aggressive tumor, and um, quite high concentrations of uh, rose hip could really decrease the growth of tumor. But in reality, if the real patient takes it, it's uh, almost impossible to gain such concentrations uh, in the tumor. That's why uh, it's not a good uh, option to use it as the single remedy against cancer, maybe as an adjunctive one. And also it could uh, improve the action of doxorubicin, the red chemical therapy drug on cancer cells. Also it uh, has proven some effects on uh, colorectal cancer, on lung cancer, cervical and liver cancer. But not enough to say that OK rose hip is a good remedy for cancer in real patients. OK, one more randomized uh, placebo control in double blind study. 31 obese individual, 6 weeks of intaking of drink from rose hip powder. The others were taking control drink and they found significant decrease in systolic higher upper blood pressure, in cholesterol, in so-called bad cholesterol and in risks of cardiovascular disease. It was 40 grams of rose hip powder for 6 weeks. Very interesting, right? Let's go further. They studied how it will affect their health of skin. How will it struggle with wrinkles? They took participants with wrinkles here in their sides of their eyes and uh, they were using special device to measure the wrinkles, how moist uh, the skin is, is it elastic or not. And they found they were comparing one group was getting their rose hip powder, the other was getting astaxanthin. Astaxanthin is their well-known anti-wrinkle remedy. And they found that uh, there was no difference and both groups had a very good effect on their skin health. That's why rose hip is uh, widely used in different shampoos, lotion, shampoos, lotions, creams and other cosmetics. Next, obesity. They took subjects who were overweight and they were giving them 100 mg of rose hip extract once a day for 12 weeks. The others got placebo and they found that those who got rose hip extract, they really decreased their body weight, uh, their fat on their, on their belly decreased, 
the internal fat around the organs decreased so it may be a good adjunctive treatment or for those who are obese or diabetic or suffering metabolic syndrome for example so quite promising uh, next the mask rose is uh, something different but also it's a type of rose this remedy is uh, highly investigated and it's worth of a separate video just i will tell you about two big studies it's a meta-analysis how can it help women suffering from uh, menstruation relating related uh, complaints it really helps headache it helped fatigue and bloating no real help with pain and one more how did it help with sleep it could really help to improve some sleep qualities uh, but it has uh, adverse effects like nausea vomiting headache and frequent sneezing contraindications as we already talked uh, contraindication is the stones in the gallbladder then if you have acute gastritis or ulcer better not to use it only if it's already not active then allergies and intolerance uh, low blood pressure because it can decrease blood pressure especially for those people who are already receiving some uh, anti hypertensive medications about risk of thrombosis there is no real data about it I just found it in one of the articles but um, as for me the only explanation I have is uh, that it's uh, diuretic that's why you will lose water and the blood will be more thick and uh, their flow will be slower and uh, the blood clots they love to be formed where there is a slow blood flow so in people who are prone to thrombosis it's uh, better maybe to avoid it or to drink more water if you if they take their wild rose adverse reactions some gastrointestinal not very serious complications gallstones don't uh, take it if you have gallstones and allergies now if you gathered their rose hip berries what should you do don't keep them fresh for more than five days you need to dry them up if you want to dry them up don't use the oven just put them onto some surface it must be dark it must be dry and uh, you must mix them all the time so they don't get mold when they are dry when they are a little bit fragile uh, they are already done you keep them in in the tissue bag that can breathe or you can keep them in the glass bottle but cover with something that uh, some tissue so there is a uh, air coming and going next vitamin c is afraid of high temperatures but more than high temperatures it's afraid of too alkaline water and too long brewing process that's why i forgot to tell you that before drying the rose hip berries don't wash them but before you brew them you must wash them you must push them a little bit then you must pierce them with some toothpick for example or if you cannot you can cut them in halves or you can smash them then you take one to ten rose hip to water and put them into the thermos better with the glass flask because contact with iron will also increase the destruction of vitamin c then we are afraid of three factors high temperature alkaline water and long brewing that's why if you use 90 degree water just use 10 to 15 minutes in thermos then you must drink it if you use 60 uh, degree water uh, use more acidic and uh, you can uh, leave it for 20 to 30 minutes and then you need to drink it but if you like very sour and concentrated drink uh, don't worry too much even their vitamin c will be destroyed after 30 minutes most likely you will still get a lot of other substances that are contained in the rose hip and by the way fill the thermos fully with water and cover it because it doesn't like the air vitamin c can survive 100 degrees heating if there is no air dear friends that's all for today i hope it was interesting for you don't forget that the nature gives us a lot of very good remedies for our health and i wish you all good luck god bless you have a strong health and see you in the next videos bye bye